Okay guys, so in this tutorial um, or video, we're going to discuss the use of a triplanar projection map for uh, use for doing things such as displacement mapping for um, textures or geometry that would be very hard or infeasible to do uh, by using actual model geometry. And it's going to be much easier and probably uh, have a little bit better look to it if you're going to just use a displacement map. So here's a kind of a more advanced or intermediate object uh, that I uh, used a displacement map onto and um, kind of shows the results that you can get. Uh, for example, this is a box shape and this one is a cylindrical shape. They're both using the same texture coordinates and the map is being seamlessly tiled on both objects. We have a, a little bit of uh, artifacts up here on the top of the uh, cylinder, but uh, overall um, it uh, looks pretty good. All right, so let's talk about how we're going to do this. I'm going to close this out. I'm going to start by uh, just creating a standard poly cube here. And it's best to uh, start with something simple so that you can just kind of get your map working. Uh, and not make it too complex uh, before you branch out and do something more complicated. So I'm starting with a box and the way this works is I'm going to just select the box and right click on it and I'm going to say assign new material and then when this dialog comes up this time I want to use a blend material and the reason I'm using a blend is because a blend uh, material actually has a specularity component to it and specularity is going to be pretty useful when it comes to displacement mapping um, because without the specularity uh, it kind of gets hard for your you to display this the subtle uh, the subtle geometry that you can get out of a displacement map so we're using a blend first thing I do when I apply a blend uh, for a, a displacement map is I'm going to set the reflectivity very low, either 0 or I kind of like 0 0.01 because everything is reflective to some degree. So I usually just use 0 0.01. Okay, so we have a blend material now assigned to our object. The next phase is we need to assign a displacement map. And the displacement map is not actually assigned on the material node uh, where you can commonly put a texture map and transparency map and all these various attributes. It's actually applied at the shader group level. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the blend material here in my attribute editor and I'm going to click the downstream connection arrow right here and it's going to take me to the blend for shader group. So the shader group node is where the displacement material gets assigned and there it is right there. Shading group attributes, displacement mat. Okay, for me to assign a displacement material to this, I'm just going to click on the little checker box right there, and it's going to open up the Create Render Node dialog box. Okay, so I want to pipe in a file texture that I made, a grayscale map that is my displacement map. So I'm going to click on File, but instead of left-clicking on File, I'm going to right-click on File. And when I do that, it's going to give me some options as to how I want this texture created. So the one I want to select is Create as Projection. So again, I right-clicked on File instead of left-clicking. And then I want to say Create as Projection. That's very important. So I'm going to do it. First thing that pops up after I do that is my Projection node. And if I go to Wireframe here, you can see at the origin here there's this little green like hunter green box and currently this planar uh, this projection node is assigned as a planar map so under the projection node we have projection type currently it's set to planar I'm going to click on this and I want to change that to a very very flexible and pretty awesome uh, node called a triplanar projection and notice when I do that the shape of this thing is going to change after I refresh the window by selecting something else and it's changed to kind of this box which is, has three sides and so what happens is this box which it, with its three sides is going to attempt to map anything that comes within its control with 
a um, the texture projected from those three sides and it's going to do it based on math but it actually does a very good job and it's kind of seamless so kind of just if uh, you don't know how to UV map or you do a UV layout or you uh, are just lazy or you just need a quick effect uh, this is kind of your baby right here so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say fit to box and what that's going to do is it's going to fit my projection node to the extents of my actual object that I just mapped it to alright and then it's going to take me to the file node for my displacement map which in this case is file 4 and I'm going to click on the folder there and I'm going to assign this uh, displacement map right here old brick tile DISB01 TIFF and if I click on view I'll just show you what this thing looks like that's all it is it's just a grayscale map with a tiled uh, rough brick pattern and uh, in black and white or not black and white gray so grayscale uh, this is an RGB image though so don't confuse a grayscale image uh, with this this is an RGB uh, image that has three colors uh, that is 8-bit but it has been desaturated so there's actually no color value so it's essentially a RGB 8-bit map that has been transformed into a grayscale image okay so that's our displacement map if I go ahead and hit the 5 key here to turn it to shaded and I go ahead and render this. I'm going to first render it using the Maya default renderer. So I'm going to change this to Maya software and I'm going to hit render. And we get something that looks like that. And the reason for that is because the Maya renderer is awful. Uh, it's not good by any stretch for pretty much anything. So we don't want, ever want to use the Maya renderer, especially when we're using uh, displacement mapping. So the first thing I want to do is I want to open up my render settings and I want to change my renderer from Maya to Mental Ray. Now if Mental Ray doesn't show up for you, you're going to have to go into Window, Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager, and then usually scroll down to the very bottom here, which is uh, Maya to MR.MLL, and you're going to click Load and Auto Load. Okay. Once you've done that, then the Mental Ray renderer will show up here as one of your choices. And so that's the first thing we're going to do. We're just going to change the render to Mental Ray, and then we're going to render this again. And we should see a little bit of improvement. It probably will still look pretty funky, though, because we have to do a little bit more tweaking in order to get it to look right. Okay, so uh, the displacement map is working, but it still leaves uh, much to be desired. So need to tweak some settings. The first of which is this relief, uh, how much it's actually distorting out from the surface is, is way too much. So the way we fix that is by selecting the object and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say material attributes and that's going to open up my blend 4 shader uh, and then I want to go to the blend 4 shader group because that's where my file is stored. So I'm going to click on the little arrow here to the right of the displacement mat channel and I'm going to go into the file node and that's where I can change the relief uh, of the actual displacement map so it's actually down here under the color balance attributes and we're going to use the color gain attribute now it's worth noting that in previous videos I was using the alpha gain to control the how much the uh, displacement map was distorting off the surface Something happened between uh, 2012 and 2013 in Maya, and the alpha gain uh, is no longer responsible for the relief. It's actually the color gain here, value. So that's worth noting. So if it's not working on uh, alpha gain, just try the color gain. So I'm going to dial the color gain down, and then I'm going to go ahead and re-render this. And the result should be that my displacement map is not nearly as uh, distorted off the surface as it once was. Okay, that's a little bit more reasonable. Uh, I actually want it to be a little bit taller, so I'm going to just increase the color gain a little bit. And then we want to do one more thing. So this looks pretty good because now we're using the mental ray renderer, but we can do a little bit more to improve the overall look of this. 
And one of the things that we should always do when using displacement map with mental ray is go into the window up here in the drop down menus. We're going to go to window, rendering editors, mental ray, approximation editor. And so what the approximation editor is, is it's kind of like a node that is a go-between between, between Maya and the Mental Ray uh, software for rendering. And it tells uh, Mental Ray how you want your surface tessellated or subdivided at render time. And this can drastically increase the quality of your displacement map. So I strongly, you don't have to use it, but I strongly recommend you using it. It's going to make your life a lot easier. So that again, that was window rendering editors, mental ray approximation editor. So I'm going to launch the approximation editor and it's going to come up. And currently for displacement, so we're looking for displacement tessellation right here. It just has the default derived from Maya and that's it. There's nothing else in the drop down. So I'm going to select the object I want to assign a new approximation for and I'm going to say create and if you'll notice it kind of changed here and now we have under displacement we have a mental ray displace approx one node and that's kind of the uh, right now the only approximation node in the scene alright so I'll uh, show you how to create several of those and you can assign them to multiple objects or single objects but we'll cover that here in a second okay so th in this one I'm just going to use one so I have this approximation node I'm going to come over here in the attribute editor and I'm going to, there's really just two presets that you need to know uh, for a simple use on this. And that is right here under the presets for quality. Right now it's set to custom. I'm going to change it to fine view low quality and then I'm going to render this again. So fine view low is going to kind of, I don't know exactly um, the detail, but I think it renders uh, about half of the resolution of your displacement map. So if you have 2048 by 2048 pixels in your map, it's going to render uh, about 1024 by 1024 of those. So uh, half the resolution, which actually equates to a quarter, that's uh, four times less resolution than the full resolution image. Now don't quote me on that. I don't know what the exact numbers are. That's just a guess based on uh, what I see when I render it. Um, okay, so that is the fine view low quality and we can see that that looks okay. Alright, so that looks okay, but I'm going to change it now from, and I'm going to save a render here so we can compare the difference. So this is the fine view low, and then I'm going to change the quality under the approximation node to fine view high. So what I typically do is I'll use the fine view low to get my map working and placed and get the qualities to look right, and then when I'm done with it, and I'm doing my final high resolution tweaking, I'll change this thing to fine view high quality. As you'll see here that this render is going to take a little bit longer, although you guys won't see it because I'm going to pause this so you don't have to wait through it. Uh, it does take about twice as long as uh, fine view low. Okay, so now I have an image here that was rendered with fine view low, and then I have another image that was rendered at fine view high, and if I toggle between these you can see the difference. So between the two, it's subtle, but to a trained eye, um, the fine view high looks uh, a lot sharper than the fine view low. See how the fine view low just kind of looks a little blurry overall? The fine view high uh, really has a crisper look to it. Alright, so I'm just uh, playing around here and getting everything to work, so I'm going to change this back to fine view low. And now I want to discuss how this thing actually works. So uh, in my render, we could see here that the texture map is oriented in a vertical orientation here. And I'm going to talk about a couple different ways that you can change the orientation of your map. If I go into the window, rendering editors, hypershay, and I'm going to go ahead and make this thing a little smaller. There we go. And I'm going to select that blend for material that I'm using. And then I'm going to click on this little button here, which is show input and output connections. If I do that, down here in my work area, it's going to show everything that's being piped into this material to make it work. 
And so we have a couple different nodes here of interest. So all of these are just different nodes that are being plugged into that material to make it do what it does in Maya in a render. The ones that we're concerned with though are these. The place 3D texture node and the place 2D texture node. So if I want to rotate this image, this displacement map, I have two ways I can do that. I can do that at the place 2D texture node or I can do it at the place 3D. So the first one I'm going to show you is at the place 2D. I'm going to double click on that node and it's going to pull up all the attributes here in the attribute editor. And I can change it by just typing in, in rotate frame 90 degrees and it will rotate it 90 degrees. So if I re-render that, we can confirm that that image has been rotated 90 degrees. Okay, so there we go. Visual confirmation. The texture has been rotated 90 degrees. Uh, looks good. There's another way to do that. So I'm going to show you the other way. I'm going to change this back to zero. And then I'm going to come over here into the hypershade. And I'm going to select the 3D placement node. Just for purposes, I want to be able to show you what's going on over here. So we have just like an object in Maya. We have a translate, rotate, and scale value for this texture placement node. We can scale the node in all three dimensions by grabbing the top right, left right, or bottom right corners. We can scale this thing non-uniform by grabbing the red and the green axes. And you'll notice here that the scale values are changing over here. We can fit this thing back to the object by just clicking on fit, fit group to box which is kind of nice or we can also rotate this guy by clicking on any of these little things here at the corner that kind of look like kites alright so I'm going to click on one of those and it's going to switch me to uh, a move manipulator scale manipulator which uh, this actually does the same thing as that other manipulator uh, just a different way to do it um, I'm going to fit that back to the box and if I click on the blue circle here on the outside it'll switch me to rotate mode and this is another way to rotate your texture map so I'm going to grab this here in the blue axis only and I'm going to rotate it about 90 degrees and then I'm going to come over here into the rotate values in my attribute editor and I'm just going to zero this up so it looks like 89.02 whatever the hell uh, I'm going to change that to an even 90 and then now if I re-render this again my texture map will be rotated uh, 90 degrees just like uh, it was before when I used the uh, 2D texture placement node to rotate it. So I just always want people to know you know there's more than one way to uh, skin a cat and so that might come in handy for something else uh, that you're trying to do uh, but either way to rotate the texture map is valid. Okay so visual confirmation that also works. Okay, now you might be asking yourself, well, that's cool, but what if I want to make that tile either bigger or smaller? And I have an answer for you. Basically, all you have to do is click on the little kite here, and you can scale the node up or down. If I scale it up, my texture map is going to get, or my displacement map is going to get bigger. If I scale it down, it's going to get smaller. Okay, so we can see here that my repeating pattern got bigger when I scaled it up. If I scale it down, it's going to get smaller. I just want to show you there's two ways to do that. The first time I used the move manipulators that here that show up on the triplanar, and this time I'm going to actually use the uh, scale manipulator that shows up in the center of the object. Alrighty. And so I'm going to make it about the same size as the box, maybe smaller this time, I'll go way smaller. And then I'm going to go ahead and render that again. Okay, and we can see that scaling the triplanar node down actually made the repeat more. And so that's just worth uh, knowing. I'm going to go ahead and say fit to box again to fit it back. And then I want to now discuss uh, something else here. So I'm going to go ahead and render this out again. Okay, so you can see here in this most recent render, you may have noticed this before, 
we have these kind of edges here where you can see that the box is almost being split at the seams and I want to uh, discuss what's actually causing that so what's happening here is the lack this object's lack of a rounded edge or actually that's not the right way to say it the, this object's lack of multiple edges at the corners is causing the displacement map to kind of not know what to do when it encounters these two faces that just kind of abruptly butt right up to each other. At this edge, it only has one edge and it kind of, the uh, mental ray and the displacement node can't turn the corner uh, with, it can't make that sharp of a turn is maybe the way to look at this. And so what I need to do is I'm going to actually make a duplicate of this box. So I'm going to go to object mode. I'm going to hit control D and make a copy of it. And then this one I'm going to go into edge mode. I'm going to select all my edges and I'm just going to apply a bevel to it. So I'm going to go over here to the polygon menu set and I'm going to say edit mesh, bevel, and I'm going to apply a bevel, then I'm going to come over here into the channel box and I'm going to edit that bevel. Uh, for offset I'm going to do like a 0.1 and maybe a little bit less than that. 0.05, that looks pretty good. And yeah, that's still too big. 0.01, there we go. 0.02, good. Okay, so now I've got two edges, but if you've taken any of my classes you will know that something that I preach uh, probably ad nauseum, is that you should have three edges for every hard edge in whatever object you're building. So even if the object has a right angle or a 90 degree angle, you still, even if the edge is hard, you still should have three edges on that edge. And this is just another case in point on why that is. All right. So I'm going to change the number of segments here to two so that I get my requisite three edges for every hard edge. All right? And so I could change this offset to make this tighter, but I'm not going to for the purposes of demonstration. Okay, so I got my box here. And I'm going to assign this material and its triplanar mapping coordinates to this object as well. So I'm going to right click on this object and I'm going to say assign existing material and I'm going to assign that blend 4 that we've been working with. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and render the image. Okay, so after the render we can see here that the effect has gotten a little bit better. It's still splitting at the seams though. And then we can see that one of these objects looks a lot better than the other one. And the reason for that is because this one on the left actually has an approximation node from the mental ray approximation editor plugged into it, and this one does not. That's one of the issues. Second issue is that the normals on the second box uh, have not been smoothed, so that uh, the smoothing angle on those extra three edges that we just added have not been harmonized, uh, so the displacement map can work with them. So we've got to do two things. First of which is we've got to open up the window rendering editors mental ray approximation editor and we're going to grab that node that we've already made the mental ray displace approx one and I'm just going to select my new box here and I'm going to assign that same node to that box so you demonstrating here that you can reuse these so you don't have to have uh, a bunch of these you can actually uh, have one of these applied to a single object or you can have a bunch of them applied to different objects depending on what uh, your needs are. Alright, so I'm going to put that away for a second and then I'm going to go ahead and re-render this. And that should fix one of our problems and that is just the kind of overall uh, muddiness or uh, kind of faceted look that the uh, one box had in addition to the other but we still are going to have the exploded edges and I'll show you how to fix that next. Okay, so the addition of the approximation node uh, kind of fixed some of the interior quality issues. Uh, so now both brick boxes look uh, of similar quality, but we still have the splitting. And again, the splitting is caused by the fact that the edges, so if I select all the edges, uh, their normals have not been softened. So if I select all the edges on that box and then I go into normals, 
under the polygon menu set and I say soften edge. Uh, now if I re-render this again we should have uh, a lot better result and the exploding that was happening at the corners uh, should disappear. Diminish or disappear, one of the two. Okay, so there we go. We have uh, visual confirmation that the smoothing of the uh, surface normals on the edges has actually stopped the box from exploding uh, with the displacement map and uh, we're on the road to success here. Alright, so now I want to discuss one more thing and that is the following. So I'm going to go ahead and go into object mode and for simplicity's sake I'm just going to reuse this box that does not have the rounded edges and I want to change my face here to make this about twice as long and then I'm going to extrude this up a little bit alright and then I'm going to go into object mode and I'm going to right click and say assign existing material and I'm going to assign that uh, blend 4 that has our displacement map on it. Uh, I'm then going to go ahead and open up the approximation editor and I'm going to assign mental ray approximation node 1 to this new object. So I'm going to say assign and then I'm going to go ahead and render this out. Okay there we go. Um, I was trying to get this effect where sometimes if you have an object that has kind of uneven edge flow so you can see here we have a polygon object that has uh, basically a different distribution of edges between polygons and so this one is about twice as big as this one sometimes with the displacement map you get this effect here where the portion up at top is a lot sharper or has kind of a uh, the one down here that's a elongated will be stretched. Uh, in this case we can see here that this portion here on this face is much sharper than the portion down here with this face. And uh, there's a couple things that you can do if that happens to you. The first of which is you can go in to uh, Edit Mesh and Insert Edge Loop Tool. And the first thing that you can try is just to insert another edge in there to try to reparameterize that to make it a little bit more uniform so that it's not spanning such a long space in order to do the displacement map. I think it's just kind of a glitch with mental ray. So I think it's a thing with mental ray where it has a hard time with the distance between the spans. It may also be a object history issue but typically if you just insert an edge here um, that can fix uh, the problem and we'll get back to and even parameterization of the displacement map and quality uh, between the two objects just by inserting that edge. So um, just an easy fix. I'm going to show you another thing after this is done rendering. Okay, so now we can see that uh, the addition of that extra edge basically uh, solved the problem and it sharpened up uh, the object overall. Alright, so I'm going to go with one more object here and I'm going to make a copy of the first box again and this time I'm going to scale it and then I'm going to reposition it here and I'm going to assign the existing material which is the blend 4 which is this uh, box right here has the material in it and I'm going to go ahead and render that out well I couldn't get it to do it but <clears throat> what basically happens sometimes is when your object in this case this last one has a scale value, if I go over here to the channel box, that is not 1, they can screw your displacement map up. So you may want to, if you're having trouble with your object and you're not getting the displacement map to map properly to your object, you may try the following. Go First thing you want to do is just go to edit, uh, delete by type history and delete the history for your object. The next thing is you want to get all these scale, scale values back to zero. This is called freezing your transformations. Not to zero. Get your, all your scale ba values back to one. So currently the scale in Y is set to 2.465. If you ever want to freeze your transformations, you're just going to select your object and say modify, freeze transformations, and then I want to freeze the transformations in translate, rotate, and scale. I'm going to say apply. And now my object has a one 
one unit scale and that can often, although in this case I couldn't get it to, uh, to mess up, um, if you are having trouble and you freeze your transformations that can often fix whatever problem you're having. Okay. So next thing I want to do is I want to talk about how flexible this thing is. And so I'm going to just show you a few different objects that this actually works on. I'm going to say create polygon primitives. I'm going to make a sphere. And then I'm going to unhide a set of stairs that I made. And so we can just kind of see that this thing works on uh, all different varieties of shapes. So I'm going to right click on the sphere and I'm going to say assign existing material. And I'm going to assign the, the uh, displacement map right here and I'm going to do it for the stairs too. Right click and say assign existing material. One, four. And then I'm going to go ahead and render that up. Okay, it looks pretty good, but I forgot to do one thing. I actually need to hook up these new objects to the approximation uh, one node that I've already created. So I'm going to go to Window, Rendering Editors, Mental Ray Approximation Editor. I'm going to select that Mental Ray Displace Approx 1, and I'm going to assign that to both of these new, two new objects, and then I'm going to go ahead and re-render that. Okay, now that it's been hooked up to the Aprox1 node, it uh, looks pretty good. I hope you can see that you can assign this uh, to a broad variety of shapes and still get a pretty good result. So it kind of makes the process of uh, displacement mapping uh, a little bit of an easier task if you don't know UV, uh, how to do UV coordinates and advanced UV layouts, or if you just need a, a, a quick fast effect, uh, this is a great way to go. All right, so finally, I have a little bit more complicated scene that I've made. I've got this little castle here. And the way this is broken down is the castle is uh, a couple different objects we've got here. The uh, turret, uh, I don't know if that's the correct term for it, but uh, uh, the keep, maybe? I'm not sure. Anyway, we have the rounded section of the castle here, and we have the rectangular section of the castle. I've created some window moldings to show you that you can basically uh, have other geometry kind of intersect with a displacement mapped object and have it look pretty good. And then this uh, object has a triplanar uh, map applied to it and the castle itself has a triplanar map applied to it as well. And then to show you how it looks in a render, I'm just going to go ahead and set it up, get a decent view here. I'm going to go into my render settings. I'm going to go to indirect lighting, and I'm going to create a physical sun and sky. I'm going to change the multiplier down to like a 0.65. I want to change the quality to production. And then, unfortunately, whenever you change the quality to pr production, you have to go back into indirect lighting and turn back on final gathering for some reason. When you change the rendering quality to production, Maya turns off final gathering on you. And then finally, I'm going to change the number of uh, final gathering uh, accuracy to 500. All right. And then I'm going to grab my sunlight node here, and I'm going to change the direction so it's not so overhead. I'll rotate it so it's kind of sundown, a little uh, backlit, I think is what I want. Alright, and then I'm going to go ahead and render that baby out, and should look pretty good. Okay, that's it. Doesn't look bad. Uh, it's worth noting that this uh, texture that I'm using, or this displacement map, is by no means the, the right uh, displacement for a castle such as this, uh, nor really uh, any of the stuff that I used in the scene. Uh, it's just basically a simple displacement map that uh, I'm using to communicate the concepts. Uh, when you guys do your own objects, I'm assuming that you're going to spend the requisite amount of time to get uh, a very good displacement map that's appropriate for your object. So, for example, if this were a castle, um, 
it would likely not have any mortar at all. It would actually just be stones that were stacked together. And so you want to pay attention to that kind of thing. So don't look at this and think that uh, mortar uh, on uh, bricks on a castle is the right way to go. That is not the case. This is just uh, for instructional purposes. All right. So good luck. Uh, use the uh, use the knowledge wisely and well, and uh, do some good work. And we'll talk to you guys later.